Greetings and welcome to Jeffical Films. There's a lot of movies done underwater with creatures and this is definitely one of them. Is it the best one? Maybe not, but I think it's worth talking about. So let's review 1989's Deep Star 6. 150 meters. Well, I don't see anything. 100 meters. Holy shit, I don't fucking believe it. See, get the C-Track. Mayday, Mayday. Look at the fucking size of that thing. Shut up and get us the hell out of here. See, get the C-Track. Hey, my God. This movie starts out with some underwater credits and we see a transport heading to a station. And then we see a couple, McBride and Joyce, and they've been hooking up the last few months and they hope to be home in a week. She's not feeling good. Pregnant? A small group of them detach in a shuttle and Jim McBride's co-pilot is looking forward to a new movie and some fresh air. And they call Snyder and head to the next US Navy base. Yeah, I see a new movie. Yeah, how about breeze and fresh air? So yeah, six months at the bottom of the ocean. It's more than I bargained for. It's national security for you. Pieces of profession. Exactly. Half the crew unloads, but Snyder and one of the doctors is heading back with the shuttle. Jim's trying to make plans with Dr. Scapelli, who's a marine biologist, but his captain, Philip Laidlaw, is giving him a ton of work and not letting that happen. Dr. John Van Gelder seems to be in charge, and he's talking to Joyce about how they stopped digging because there's a cavern below. Bertsiaga says you can't install a missile sled over a cavern. It undermines the foundation. Well, fine. Collapse the cavern with explosives and put the missile sled on top. According to these soundings, that cavern's pretty deep. Before Snyder runs off to go complain to Norris, the medical doctor, he tells the crew about the caverns, and Scarpelli goes to see the Dr. Van Gelder and argues her case about how they should be exploring these caverns. They could find discoveries that they've never found before. Scarpelli then goes to the captain and says she wants to go to the missile site and check out these caverns because collapsing them is a big mistake. But he knows the US Navy wants those missiles set up by the end of the week. So she goes to work off her frustrations in a PG shower. But I'm happy for Jim. Come on. That water or anything can be a bitch, can it? Very funny. It looks like you're going to have to wait 24 hours before you can finish this shower. Unless, of course, you can find someone and persuade them to let you use their car. It's getting cold. Hodge and Osborne set off a charge which actually collapses the seafloor, so they send off a remote to check it out, and Joyce asks them to record it. The remote gets cut off by some thing, and so they detach and they go after it. Joyce and Dr. Bersiega, who's a geologist, are discussing how these caverns might form and what could be down there as we see something closing in on Osborne, and it's huge. This cavern was probably formed by a lava bubble. So could sea creatures have been trapped under the lava and survived? I imagine it's possible. So they could be thousands of years old? Maybe millions. They lose contact and call Deep Star 6, and Joyce tells Snyder to get the captain because whatever it was rammed the station, and we also learn why you should secure crates. Snyder lost contact, so the captain and McBride are going to head over in a shuttle. We see the little station's about to fall off the cliff, and Joyce is trying to help the doctor. His legs hurt and there's blood in the water, but she can't get the crates off him. Also, the captain asks McBride when he's going to marry Joyce. McBride gets something on the radar, heading for them at fast speed, so they have to kill the lights and drop down. And then they head to the station. They have to dock very carefully because they could knock it off the cliff. They go through the station and have to crank the door open. And then the station shifts a bit. And they find Joyce and Bersiega, and his legs are crushed. He actually dies before they can get him out of there. And then they leave to go through the door, but the captain isn't as lucky. I get that the captain wants them to leave, but flooding the station could kill them too. Joyce has to swim down and try and stop McBride for far too long. They're wasting a lot of air, but they do make it back to the shuttle and they escape just in time before the station falls off the cliff. <laughs> They get back to Deep Star and Doc checks out Joyce and secrets out of the bag. She's pregnant and if you can hear the heartbeat, well she's at least six weeks along. Jim checks on his buddy to make sure he's alright. I know you and the captain were pretty close. I, I mean, you know, a lot closer than everybody else. And I liked him a lot. Guess I just came down here to say that. I'm gonna miss him. I know. The 
plan is to get extracted, but Van Gelder wants the missiles secured before they go. Snyder's gonna do it, but apparently it says he has to destroy him. That's gonna work out well. So Snyder pushes in the codes, and you would think there would be rules against beverages on computer consoles and underwater stations. Yes. Fuck. Shit. Detonating might not have been the best idea. And the panic is on. There's leaks, circuit shorts, little fires, and they gotta do some welding quickly. Some sections are flooded and they've got seven to eight hours of air left. And the cooling reactor is gonna go super critical in a few hours. Not just critical, super critical. And they can't even take the escape pods up because they need to be able to depressurize first. Joyce has a plan, so everyone starts to work together, and Jim gets in this giant underwater suit. That thing's gotta be heavy, and he goes down there to fix one of the lines, but he's not alone down there, and he starts getting attacked, so everybody helps out and gets the airlock open and pulls him up, but they're not alone either. God damn it, there's something in the fucking airlock! Jim is bitten in half, and the room is flooding, and we can see the creature's in there. And poor Scrapelli, she gets stuck in there, and the creature grabs her. Fuck! <laughs> McBride and Joyce get through, but Snyder locks the door on them. Doc Norris says that they have to get in there and attach the hose. So she sends them to go get weapons, and Van Gelder gets his head wrapped. They arm up with shotguns and these pikes that inject air, and they head into the chest high water, and McBride goes down to fix in the bypass, and when he comes about, so does the creature, and it's fucking huge. And I'm pretty sure Snyder stabbed Van Gelder on purpose. I've got a bad stage. Let's get the hell out of here. McBride! <laughs> The rest of them escape the room and he claims it's an accident and they seem to accept it but he's still freaking out so they give him a shot to calm him down. I think Snyder's starting to hallucinate as he runs off and he pulls one of the emergency alarms. I think he's gonna steal one of the escape pods but he needs to decompress first but he doesn't and so a bunch of water starts flooding in. Snyder then experiences what we like to call in the unlicensed medical community decompression sickness. The air is almost gone and the reactor's got about 3 hours and 43 minutes, barely enough time to decompress. But McBride takes advantage of this no-win situation. Will you marry me? I'd marry anyone who'd get me out of this mess. Done. But he also has a plan to bring the shuttle around to the decompression bay, but he has to swim through the station. And he does. Also, it's much smaller than the shuttle, it's like a little mini sub. The girls hear him knocking on the other side of the door, at least they think they do. There should be a way to check so that this doesn't happen. Oh God, it's McBride. Norris tells Joyce to get into the chamber. It takes about 30 seconds before the door will open. The room's half flooded. McBride gets in there just in time to save Joyce. But first, let me just point this out. Guys, I love your creature. It's threatening, it looks cool, it's huge, but therein lies the problem. It seems like it's too big to actually get through the door into that room. Norris lets out a one-liner, and then she tries to electrocute it. dies and sinks and they decompress and head into the sub and head up to the surface the reactor blows and they experience a shock wave they get to the surface fire off the inflatable boat and wait for rescue presumably to live happily ever after Just kidding, it attacks. McBride empties the gas and lights it on fire with a flare gun, and... How did 
Joyce gets so far away? Also, the creature got out of the room, survived the explosion, and then went to the surface to go get them? Hey! Uh, McBride! Joyce sees McBride swimming up behind her. Come on, you telling me he doesn't have a first name? The end. Also, where's the Navy? This had a budget of 8 million, it made 8.1 million, it has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, but I'm sorry, this is far more entertaining than a lot of the shit I've seen recently. And you gave that a percentage. Sure, the script could have used the once over, and it's no Leviathan, but I still enjoyed it. Cheesy effects and all. At least the actors were trying, which made it more fun. I like these dual threat movies, whether it's the environment underwater or in space, and the psychological toll, and the undiscovered creature, it's always awesome. Nancy Evanhart, who played Joyce Collins, did fine in this. I thought she was decent, and then she went on to do a lot of stuff, TV and movies. Greg Evigan, who played McBride, went on to go star in a series and movies of Tech Wars, and those shows are cool. Miguel Fierre, who played Snyder, man, this guy's from Robocop, and so much more. This guy's awesome. And Nia Peoples, who played Scarpelli. I mean, she's got a singing career, an acting career. In the end, if you're looking for a creature feature to check out that you haven't seen before, this is definitely one of them. I mean, Leviathan I would rank definitely higher, but it also had a bigger budget. This is low budget, and they did a pretty decent job with it. That creature just looks freaking awesome. So if you haven't checked it out, you should. Might as well. It's not going to hurt you. As always, thanks for watching. Okay, that ought to do it. Collins! Yeah. Be careful, Jim. Oh, I should walk in the park.